we're back to regular play here on the final wager, and uh, we have a ten-time champ in Julia Collins looking to tie Arthur Chu for third, third most victories all time. I apologize, I've got some allergies or something going on today. <clears throat> so she's in the lead here with 16-4. James, one of the challengers, is with 11,000. Leah, 4,200. We'll start with first and second. Julia and James. James doubles up, he'll have 22,000 even. So to cover him, Julia will need to wager 5,600. We can tie now that we're not in the tournament anymore, so 5,600. If she gets it wrong with that wager, she'll have 10,800. So that means James can wager up to 200 to stay above her. And you'll see here that Leah can only have 8,400, so she can't catch Julia. Now we get into the mind games. If James just wagers this 200 amount, he'll have 11,200 at most. So that means that Julia could wager between 0 and 5,200, and if James goes really small, then he'll win no matter what. On the other hand, if James is scared of Julia going small, up to 5,200, he might want to wager large, in which case he should just wager everything. but at least uh, 10,600. Don't really care about Leah. James shouldn't care about Leah. James should just worry about winning the game. Okay, let's see what each of our players did. Leah was out of the running, but she would have been in contention had she not gotten that last clue wrong. She got it right, wagered 1402. Over to James, who got it wrong, and wagered 600, which, if he wanted to go small, was too much. Julia, also got it wrong, wagered 5,700, and beats James by 300. Now this just shows the importance of coming into the game with a wagering strategy in mind. James would have won that game. Instead, it's Julia coming back tomorrow for her 12th game. Congratulations to her. She's now tied with Arthur Chu for third all time. We'll see if she can break into third all by herself tomorrow on the final wager.